Hey y'all, I'm James Wright, and welcome back to another edition of The Joy of Woodworking. Uh, yeah, enough of that. This thing's getting hot. <laughs> I hope you all liked that video on Monday. I had a lot of fun with that. And uh, yes, um, almost as much fun as I normally have in the shop. Right, babe? Huh? <laughs> I love you. Um, so... <laughs> we are working on a flower box and this will actually be a, a fairly simple little project and a good beginner's project and it's going to have a front and front and back and, and two sides uh, we'll have a captured bottom in it and tonight we're going to be doing the dovetail so last night uh, we actually went through and dimensioning the lumber cutting it to length and trimming them up and showing a few different ways of that as well as making the groove today we're going to work on putting in the dovetails on this. So it should be kind of fun. Hopefully we'll get through all of the dovetails on this and then next week we will do the bottom and the glue up on it. Um, and that should be an interesting time doing a glue up live. Um, it's always interesting. You never know what's gonna happen. Um, but before we get on to this, how is the audio? I it looks good. Can you make sure that the first dial is pointing at the little arrow on the, on the mic on the audio board? The far left one. It should be pointing at the arrow. The green one, triangle thing. Yeah, yeah. the bottom left corner. Yeah, that one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, is that why? Is that my mic? That's both of our. Well, no, that's uh, that's yeah, that's your mic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, maybe so. Um, where are we at? Oh, things coming up. So, um, if you are new to the lives, we do this every. Uh, every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Time. I had to think about that for a minute. And I'm thinking about actually doing a few of these on Twitch as well. So if you're on Twitch, let me know what your thoughts are on that. We'll see. Um, but uh, if you want to join me live, come on here, and we do have a lot of fun. And if you are not live, we do give a giveaway each week, which is a card scraper, which I should have here. Yes, um, I sell these on my uh, my channel, um, my website. So we're going to be giving one of these away. Come here. One and giving one of these away, and I'll be announcing that winner in a little bit here. And then later on in the video, we'll be giving one away next week. Um, if you aren't watching this live, you can look down in the description, and I have a timestamp beside all of the questions that were asked, so you can read through those questions and jump to any particular part in the the, uh, the day. If you see a question, you're like, ooh, let's answer that. Um, things coming up in two weeks. Uh, actually, a week from this weekend, uh, we have the meet coming here to Love's Park. It is the Midwest Tool Collectors Meet, which I'm really looking forward to because it's only a couple miles away from my house, so it's kind of nice to actually have a meet that's like right here in town rather than driving three, four, five, sixteen 16 hours to get to it. Uh, and then in May, I'm going out to UK for Maker Central, and my wife will also be there with me. I was so say, we are we going, are going to be going out there. It should be a fun time. It'll be 10 days without the kids. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so if any of you are going to be at Makers Central in the UK, I'd love to say hey. Feel free to walk up and uh, um, shake our hands and hang, shoot the breeze. Maybe we'll do a meetup over there. Uh, we'll see what we're going to do. Did you ever give away your Makers tickets? Yes, we did that a couple okay. weeks ago. Just so um, oh, yes, let's announce the winner. So last week we had the question of how many hand planes do I have? Um, and I considered any hand plane... Anything that you would call a plane. So not a spoke shave, not a draw knife, um, but all of my planes waiting to be restored, all of the planes that are restored, all of my molding planes, Stanley 45, Stanley 55. And I came up with the number of 83. I have 83 hand planes. Um, some people were guessing five, 600. I think one person guessed over 1,000. Um, and a few people were guessing like 30 or 40, which you can see more than 30 or 40 behind me. <laughs> uh, but we had one person who actually guessed dead on 83. Uh, Derek Atkins. Atkins? I'm slaughtering your name. Um, but I gave How's it you... spelled last name? What's that? What, how's the last name? I don't have it spelled out here. Oh. Um, and so that's why I'm probably spelling it. I did my shorthand. Um, which is really short. I was... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I sent you a, a message replying to your comment that was correct. Uh, if you can just give me a, uh, a uh, send me a message on my contact form on my website, and I'll get a card scraper sent out to you. So a little later in the video, we'll be telling you how you can win uh, a card scraper for yourself. So anything I'm forgetting before we jump into the build? I don't think, I think we've got it. We are doing dovetails. Um, 
And a dovetail is it's something that a lot of people rever revere as the pinnacle of joinery or the hard thing to make, the, the piece that is very delicate. And you know if you made a hand-cut dovetail, you made something amazing. Uh, but the truth is, in history, dovetails were really kind of looked down at as the quick and simple and easy joinery that you just you, you tried to hide it. And so that's why you have half-blind dovetails and full-blind dovetails. Uh, there, there's something that they're just, they weren't really proud of, um, but it's a really easy way to do it. And if you do a bunch of them, you can crank these out pretty quickly. Uh, you can do most corners. Uh, if I were to gang make a whole set of drawers, um, I can do a, an entire drawer's worth of um, dovetails every half hour. And I can crank them out pretty quickly. Now, it's not machine ready, but if I'm just doing one box, I can usually make them a, a box worth of dovetails by hand faster than I can setting up a router jig. Um, they're, they're, they're fairly straightforward and fairly easy. So I wanna show you the quick method that I do to hand cut dovetails. Um, I'm not looking for perfection. Um, I like dovetails to be slightly askew. I don't like all the angles to match because I want them to look um, just slightly out of place. Uh, and that just adds that little bit of handmade item to it. Now, if you make everything perfect and every joint at the exact same angle, uh, it just looks machine made, even though it was hand cut. And that's just something that, uh, personal preference. So I'm gonna show you my particular method, which is a little bit interesting, uh, but we're gonna be having some fun. Any questions before we jump into this? Well, they were talking about the, your wall backdrop. Uh-huh. That's pretty yeah, I think I had 58 on the wall itself, no, something like that. No, no, no. The wood itself as the backdrop that's stained different. Oh, colors. behind it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I made, I bought it stained. Yeah, was that was uh, it Menards? Menards, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so they have more of our money than I'd care to have. <laughs> we have spent a lot we, of money at Menards. We have spent a lot of money. Um, you're the one who makes that money yeah, mostly. Yeah, I know. So. <laughs> so um let's do this first thing i want to do is put the boards into the i want to focus it let's focus that's there awesome. that's better <laughs> i want to put the boards into the vise and i want to make sure the tops are nice and flush um, oh do, do, do. before i do that the first thing i want to do before i do anything else is find my marking gauge which has rolled away um, and I want to actually put the stop cut, the depth of cut all around this. And the way that is determined is by the thickness of the other board. So I'm gonna bring over, I'm gonna bring over this board. I'm gonna put my marking gauge on here and I've already set it to this so that it is the exact same thickness as my board here. Then I can bring that over here and mark all of these. So once I have my depth cut on this, and because this is the one with the tails, I just need to mark the two faces. I like leaving that line there to show it. Some people hate that line and so they'll do it with a pencil or they'll make a really light cut so that they can clean it off later. I actually like leaving that line just because I do like the line. Because you um, also like annoying people. <laughs> I do like annoying people. <laughs> then the other thing is I want to put these together face to face so that the inside fibers are all protected. So I'm actually going to put these in here face to face slide them down into here, give it a little bit of pressure, and then tap them into place until they're both exactly where they need to be. I want to make sure it's nice and smooth across the top, and they're both lined up on the bottom here. Just like that. Then we're gonna crimp it down and lay out our top. Now I'm gonna use dividers here. I don't normally do this, but the idea is you can lay them out in any particular pattern you'd like. Why is that springing out like that? Bit, one of my, oh, I've got the tape on the inside still. I should have taken the tape off. Oh, well. I'm just going to put this on there to temporarily clamp it. Move this back a little ways. So I got a cut there. There. Um, I have the, the tape on the face. Uh, I forgot to take that off beforehand. So I'm going to take dividers on here. If I set one on the edge and I lay it out, and I can put one mark here, and then I'm gonna walk it over and put another mark here. And I laid this out already on the other one. And basically the layout is, I'll do that, then I'll start from the other side, and I'll swing back around, 
and I'll look at this then. I'll say, do these pins then look about the right size? If not, then I'll adjust my dividers and rewalk it off again. I might walk it off over here, and then I might walk it off over here and adjust them back and forth until I get these looking exactly the way I want. So I'm not measuring anything out. I'm not laying out three quarter inch, one inch, three quarter inch, or whatever. I'm just eyeballing to see what I like. Then once I have it set, I can lock these dividers in, and I can use these on all of my tails from here on out to make sure I get the same marks all the way across. You know, I used these calipers a lot too, but they were much smaller and measuring heart strips. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. That was, what was the name of that place? What? The name that, of like every hospital that takes care of cardiac Oh, at hospital. Oh, I thought you were talking about the electrics place you worked at. Oh, oh gosh, no. That's a That was a long time ago. So I do want to lay out lines all the way across here on the top because it is very important that you cut at 90 degrees to the face you're working on. And so I am going to lay out all of these. And I'm moving around because the camera is on that side. And now that I have this line in place, some people want to come in here with a dovetail gauge and then lay out the angles at whatever they want to be. I actually like the feel of an organic cut. So I'm going to come in here, nick in on the far side, lower the saw across until I have a nice clean line, and then I'm going to tilt my saw to that degree. Whatever that is, that's where I'm going to cut my dovetails at. You notice here I'm cutting both at the same time so that I'm gang cutting them. It's quicker and easier. And then whatever's on one side will match the other side perfectly. I'm so a little that angle? about your affinity for gangs this episode. What about my gangs? Said your affinity for them. Come to Wood by Right. Join the Dovetail Gang. <laughs> and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side and just angle off the other way now. So I'll set it over here. And I know this really bothers a lot of people, but oh well, this is Wood by Right. We're all about bothering people. Thus the video on Monday. That video really struck a chord. I think I got 24 down votes. Oh, and I usually Ross. get like one or two. <laughs> well, how dare you? I know. So there, we have our dovetails angles all cut, just like that. Now, we're going to do a little trick here. And now, some people like to actually cut them out with a coping saw, which I'll do that a little later. But I actually like to chisel these out. Um, it might be a little slower, it might be a little faster. Everyone does it a little differently, but I really enjoy it. I'm going to start with the insides down. Change this up a little bit. I'm going to start with the inside faces down because I want to end with them up. And if I, if I do make any mistakes, I want it to be on the inside rather than on the outside of the box, which I'll explain that here in a minute. Use a hold fast. Let's move this over to lock them down in place. Now we can start chiseling. I'm going to move this over to give you guys a little better view. Now, do you want them une uneven on purpose? What's that? Did you want them uneven on purpose? Yes, yes I do. Okay. Um, but I'm going to zoom in here to yeah. give a slightly better view. Oop, let's move that. Um, any questions while I'm setting this up? Um, how about you change the camera now? Well, I, I will admit. I'm just <laughs> any questions while I'm setting this up. No, there are no questions. Wow, quite a question. I know. People are enthralled by the We have dentists. a dad joke, but no questions. <laughs> What's the dad joke? So Jim Dockrell says, um, as, I as I suspected, someone has been adding soil to my garden. The plot thickens. I like that one. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> yes. okay, let's switch the camera back. Okay, so we've got our dovetails here. And what I like to do is just to come in and rather than putting it right into that line, pull it back about a sixteenth inch or so. Just do one quick tap down and chop that across. And the nice thing about setting them up like this, 
in sequence, oh, they're just ever so slightly off, is that I can quickly go across them. As long as I hold the chisel down here, I can go rather quickly, boom, 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 then slide it down, and again, do the same thing down here. And you can imagine if you have an entire chest of drawers set up this way, with eight or nine of these in place, you can go through a whole lot of them now, very quickly. You want the same ones being cut out? Yep. Really? Yeah, so that they're matching this end. And then, here's one problem that a lot of people have, is when you chop in, you can come in from the end and pop them in this way, and that goes pretty well. But I like to start and go in an angle. And so if I start here, bevel up like this, sometimes, and I'm trying to make it happen, it's not going to happen right now as the hold fast is holding pretty well, my force is more in line with the board here. And what happens is my force is trying to push this board that way, which the hold fast is not quite as good holding it that way. So what I'm going to do is flip it around, bevel down, and this is going to put my force more down into the board. And this way I can just come in and pop these bits up. And again, if you get good at holding it, so you don't have to set the mallet down, you can go back and forth and back and forth. I'm going to chop in again. And this just repeats the process. Chop in, pair out, chop in, pair out. Okay, so I got to go back to this visualizing for me. So those ends aren't the corner. They're connected to opposite ends. Yes, these do not connect to each other. Okay. These are opposite ends. So these are the... Excuse me, hold fast slid there. Um, these are the end boards so of like, the box. Here's my corner. There. Yes, they are opposite ends gotcha. of the board. Opposite ends of the box. Okay. Some of us do not visualize things as well as others. No. Because you always want all of your tails to be on the ends, and then all of your pins to be on the faces. Or vice versa, depending upon Again, which way the force is going to be. No, that's just James. And with this one, I'm close to halfway, not quite halfway through. Close there. I think we'll do one more series and then flip these over. I have a yeah. question. When you What's get to that? A point. Dante asks. Would it be better to put the top one right in line with the marking line on the bottom one? That way you have an edge to cut against for the bottom one. You're getting ahead of me. I'll be showing that off. I don't line them up perfectly right off the bat because they're going to slide around a little bit. In particular, in this hole on the bench, I know this hold fast works loose. And so there's no reason to take my time and line them up perfectly yet. But I'm going to show you that here in just a moment. Um, some people are very, very picky. Here, let's lock this down before I move any further. Some people are very, very picky about that knife wall being perfectly vertical. Actually, I'm going to do it right now. Um, and one way you can do this is to make a lot of noise. But I'm just going to tap these into place so that this set of pins makes a perfect line down to the knife wall on the bottom one. And so what I can do, just line them up with just a hair better, right there. So now what I can do is I can put my chisel right into that line, which happens to be perfectly in line with the board. And now my chisel is going to use this as a reference to cut straight down. And that's really picky to some people, but to me it's not. I actually like to undercut them a little bit. So what I'm going to do is put it against there. And then after the first tap, I'm just going to pull it away from the board just a little bit so that it undercuts that gap just a hair. There is no strength at that point in the joint, so there's no reason for it to be good and tight or good and flat against it because it's an ingrain glue there. But for most of the time, I don't even mess with lining them up. I just eyeball this being vertical. Here, let's zoom this out a little bit better. Most of the time, I just eyeball the chisel being vertical. And after doing it for a while, your hand gets to feel okay. what is vertical. You zoomed out a little too far, so it's not good. 
refocus got off. What's that? Refocus it. Oops, sorry. Is that better? Yes. Thank cool. You. Thank you. And once your eye gets good at checking them, you don't really need to worry about it, especially if you're okay with undercutting just a hair. And by just a hair, I mean that like the middle of these will be off by a 64th of an inch or less. It's not much at all. So now we can clean these out, flip them over, and do the same thing on the other side. There's just a few things different to watch on this. So while I'm chopping this, anyone got questions? No. No? What's wrong with you people? <laughs> I don't know. I'm actually healthy, and they don't, they're not peppers. Yeah, Sarah questions. is not sick for once. And so when I'm not talking or showing things, this goes really quickly, especially when you have a whole pile of them to do. Okay. I'm doing Are like, you trying to be zoomed out? Whoop. Yes, I want to be on the main one. Okay. Oh, well, that broke off easily. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute. And normally, I can do this a little bit faster than a coping saw if I have a whole bunch of them to do. If I'm just doing one at a time, I may end up using the coping saw as the gang cutting really just doesn't help that much. But uh, yeah, everyone's a little different. Some people really like using the coping saw and some people really like chiseling out. I enjoy the chiseling because it's just fun. Seeing these curls pop out is enjoyable. Let me switch back to this one. So Paul Baylor wants to know what type of wood you're using. Ah, uh, do you know what it is, babe? I've said white oak. Oh, yes. But apparently I'm not believed. No, it's white oak. <laughs> or they just want to hear you say it. I don't know. No, one of the reasons why I work with white oak is I've gotten several good deals on it. The other say. reason is that I really enjoy it. It is a very difficult wood to work with, but well worth the difficulty as it's incredibly beautiful. Today of... Yeah, and there I just pop through. Some people are really picky about popping through too early, and that leaves the middle kind of frayed. I'm afraid not. Oh <laughs> I don't care about the middle being frayed again. I'm usually going to undercut a little bit. So, oh well. But then we just come in like that. Pop in, chip out, pop in, chip out. What's that? Hold fast, came loose. Adjust that again. Really should put it on a different hole. So, Tim BBQS, your lettering scheme, is it left, front, and then right? You're on your um, oh, yes. Yeah, my, my lettering is the word in the middle. How do I keep getting that? I don't know. Um, the, the letter in the middle is what the board is. So this is the front board, and this is the left end, and this is the right end. Whereas on the backboard, left and right are opposite. So right is this way, left is that way. Um, and then on these boards, they have if it's the left board or the right board, and then which end. There we go. Let's just pop these out and then do the final adjustments. Hitting that a little harder than I normally would. But again, I don't care about the blowout so much. Pop out the pieces. I like doing this. I don't know why this, this part is really enjoyable, just popping out these chunks. So then we're gonna do the same thing here. Put it right into that knife line, set it up vertically, tap it down. And here I don't wanna hit it too hard so that I go through and gouge out. But again, we're doing, we now have the inside face up so if I do gouge out, the mark will be on the inside of the box, not the outside. Which I think I already marked this one once. Going a little bit fast. And then do this one down here. And we've got our tails done. Any other questions? Um... R. Tawny asked, have you talked about the Turbo Twin Screw Vice and what do you think about it? Uh, I'm guessing you're referring to the Veritas Twin, twin Screw that I have here. Um, I did a video on its installation back when I put it into the bench. And I like it. I like it a lot. 
Uh, there's a few little things that I get nitpicky about, but in the end, it is an incredible amount of force and is a very enjoyable vise. Um, so I would highly recommend it. I don't know if there's a twin screw that I would pick over that one. Clean these out. Now the next thing I want to do is go through and make sure that it's square across there. Particularly, I want the outside, if one side is higher than the other, I want the outside to be higher because that'll be the one that's showing. But in this case, we've got a really nice tight fit all the way across, nice and square. It also lets you see if anything's sticking up. Not that vice, the one with the gears. This one has gears. I don't know. I don't know which one you're talking about. I just, I'm reading the comments. Oh, oh, he's talking about the, the new one that, uh, uh, what's his name, just came out with. I haven't had a chance to play with it. I would love to play with it, though. Um, yeah, remember, it's, it, has, it doesn't have chain. It just has pure gear on gear action. Um, so it's a really cool system. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I just want to get a little bit picky on these. I'm going to grab my file. I'm going to grab a small file in here. And I'm just going to clean up these faces. Make sure that everything on these is the way it needs to be. Just a little bit of touching up here and there. Make sure nothing is sticking up where it shouldn't be sticking up. Uh oh, which one did I just do? I'm doing front and front. So I need that one and that one. Because this one had a little bit of schmoo right there. So if I get rid of it now, it won't jam up later on. That one and that one. OK, now we are ready to transfer the marks onto our board. So let me back this up and show you a little bit more this way. How we do this. So I'm going to transfer it onto this board. And I have the front face out, away from the bench. I'm going to slide it onto here. I'm going to put my, uh, my block plane right onto here. And my block plane, I'm going to adjust it so that the top of the board is perfectly level and flat with the block plane. Lock that down. This allows me to bring this back. And I want to make sure I have the right board onto this piece, which should be this one. Make sure. Right, right. There we go. Oh, got some junk in there. Must have clamped it down. Oh, well. And this allows me to put the, the block plane back here a little ways. Uh, move this over a little bit better for you. There you go. And this is really useful for longer boards, as you can put the block plane back as far as you need to. I'm going to eyeball this up down. Because this is the bottom of the board with the groove, I'm going to make sure that the bottom of this one lines up with the bottom of this one nice and flat there. And then I'm going to eyeball down so that I'm just touching inside. Take my time on this. Once the board gets right where I want it to be, I'm going to put all my force down on the board, kind of get down on top of it, and then mark out where these lines are. Any questions? Yes, I have a couple now. Okay. So Greg Cheng asks, the dovetailing class I took, the teacher stated that you should chisel in slightly deeper than the knife line. Do you know what the reasoning behind that would be? Slightly deeper than the what line? Knife line? Um, I don't know. It sounds like something a little different if you are... I don't know why you'd want to do that. Well, Just, someone said that so you could plane the ends and get a cleaner look. Oh, uh, I know what they're saying. Um, what happens is on, um, on the pin board, if you chisel down a little bit lower, then what that happens is it allows the tails to slide down a little bit farther so that the pins stick out past the top and you can plane them off. Um, if you thickness planed all your boards to a precise thickness and you don't want to take anything more off the surface of them, then yeah, that makes sense. Um, but I always have a shaving or two I want to take off of every surface and I want to clean them up. And so that really doesn't help me at all because I'm going to be planing them off anyways. Um, so I, yeah, I don't, I don't like doing that. I like keeping that line where it's at because 
the, having that line, a nice, perfectly straight line, is very important. And if you start chiseling down past that, it's hard to keep that line straight because there's nothing to stabilize it and want to keep chopping out. Um, so next thing I want to do is cut in the knife line here. And in this case, I need it to go around the ends. Sorry, I cut in there. Cut in there. The ear. And there. And that is my depth cut, so I know how far down to cut. And normally, I'm just going to judge my eye. I don't need to worry about this. I want this to cut straight down, but my eye's gotten fairly good with seeing it. Where I can see my reflection in the plate and know which way to tip the saw. Oops, turn this up a little bit. But to make it a little easier to see, it's often easier if you just put one vertical line down your side because keeping this perfectly vertical is very important to it fitting together well. Whereas on the other side, what angle you cut those at really doesn't matter because whatever angle you cut those at is what angle you're going to put these lines at. In this case, having this vertical really does matter. So I like to show this because I usually do this if I'm really picky about it. But if I'm just making a dovetail for a regular drawer and I'm not terribly picky about being precise, then I just eyeball it and cut it. it saves a little bit of time. Now, before I go any farther, I need to mark. I'm removing this piece, I'm removing this piece, and I'm removing this piece. Stay on the side of the line that the X is on. This is going to kill more people than anything else if they cut on the wrong side of the line. We want to keep that line there. I don't want to actually touch that line. I want to be just off it. I want to just nick it as I go by. Once I develop that across, then we can just cut straight down that vertical line that we just laid in. Same thing on this one, on down. And then down to this one. I would ask for questions, but this is a little loud. It only takes a second more here. Why is sawing? So loud. Of course, my kids think that this is really loud and they need ear headphones for it. <laughs> and here I want to show you what I'm going to do for taking this out. It's for coping saw. I'll just stick it in here. And I don't want to go all the way down to the bottom. I want to lift it up a little ways from the bottom, put a little bit of pressure starting to turn it, but only turn it on the pull stroke. I, uh, I have this cutting on the pull. Some people like to cut on the push. Um, I just found it a little bit easier to cut on the pull stroke. So I'm going to turn it a little bit, but then pull it and turn a little bit more. And I don't want to turn it more as I push it back. I want to keep it at whatever angle it's at. Push it back, turn it a little bit more, and pull it again. Push it back, turn it a little more, pull it again. And before you know it, you're going to be able to do that really easily without actually thinking about it. Keep it a little bit above that line. and you cut across. Now we still have to go back and trim that out, which we'll do here in a minute. But before we do that, I'm gonna turn this over and cut down this way. Now this, this side's simple because that knife line, now becomes the, saw, the, the line that you're keeping the saw on, that you're guiding the saw, just cut straight down that. Sorry, hit the microphone there. And before I move on, I stay just a hair away from that line, and I want to come back and chisel it down to that line. Just like that, and just like that. Any questions when working on this? Well, Jim just asked, are you cutting off the pins on the pin board? Um, I'm cutting off the corners on the pin board. So I'm leaving half tails rather than half pins. I know a lot of people think that's absolutely ludicrous to do, but in all honesty, it really doesn't matter one way or the other. Strength is the exact same. It's just something I like to do. So I'm just going to undercut this just a hair. <laughs> and then I'm going to come in with a file and clean up this surface, just like I did before. 
And just to make sure everything's right, check this to make sure it's square all the way across, as we are. Or at least that I'm touching on the front and touching on the back. Turn this over, do the same thing down this side. quite cut all the way down with the dovetail saw on the first time. So you gotta clean this out a little bit. Any questions now? Um, I will, but I was just thinking that we have like a whole bunch of advertising space on the back of your head that we are not maximizing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is my that life. That's why I was laughing to myself. <laughs> I like a Charlie Brown face or anyway, sorry. I have to humor myself somehow. Uh, Jack Gibson <laughs> asked, what things do you have to do differently to get a good tight fit when dovetailing in a soft wood like pine as opposed to working with a hard wood like oak? Um, the only thing you really have to do differently is your chisels have to be sharper uh, for pine than they do for hardwoods. Uh, pine crushes easily and hardwoods don't crush quite as easily. So it is very, very important that your chisels be extra sharp when working with softwood. Other than that, functionally, uh, it really doesn't matter. Just, the, I think one of the biggest problems is people try to cut into their knife wall too quickly, which, <laughs> actually, let me show you this. Um, zoom in just a hair here. And I want it to be this way. There we go. Um, is with, with pine, in this case, I have about a sixteenth of an inch from here to the line, and this end I got about a thirty-second of an inch. With pine, I would split that in half, and I would get closer to the line, and then I'd get even closer. But with white oak, the wood is hard enough that it's not my chisel is not going to move as much with that much left. So I'm just going to go right into the line with hard with uh, with with hardwood. With pine, I'd sneak up on that line far more. Um, and get closer to it before actually going into that line. So I just have to come in here and clean that up. Flip this over. This is where a lot of people really worry about the chisel being perfectly vertical in that uh, it doesn't have to be perfectly vertical. Yeah, it's kind of nice, but if you're off of it a little ways, oh well. There. There. Then I'm going to bring in my square and check it again. Make sure I'm referencing off the front. And we're good. It's touching front and back. I just need to clean it up with a file and this should be ready to fit. And so we'll be able to see, does this actually work right off the tools? I haven't brought this piece over here yet. This is front, front, there. Okay, so let's see if this works. How often does the uh, does the, the tail actually fit perfectly on the first try? Very, very rarely. Almost never. Um, but, uh, oh my. Let's see. I'll take that. Um, happy got a little bit of a gap here and I don't quite know why I think I just didn't cut that perfectly vertically and I got a little gap over here too I wonder if I'm actually just pushing it over that may be the case can you uh, zoom in um, I will in just a moment I'm just oh, okay. setting this up and turn this around this way so you can see a little better It'll go down, but I'm just seeing if my my theory is correct. That one's there, that one's there, so it's being pushed that Stay way by away. that. No, just a little gap there. Okay. So, yep, I have a little bit of a gap on this one, but enough that once the glue goes in and you plane it down, you'll have a really nice clean edge there. Now, some people were talking about 
um, chiseling down past the line so you have a little bit sticking up so you can plane it off. Right now, I'm perfectly smooth here, but the top of this board for some reason tilts that way. Actually, let me see if this... No, that's right where I want it to be. Okay. Wait. Mm. What's that? So you got that little hole. Hole? Well, where you had the groove. You oh, yeah. It's right here? That. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, the groove hole. And we'll be covering that later. Uh, what you can actually do is save these little blocks here, and you can create a wedge that will go in there and fill it up. Or you can just leave it alone. Um, not a huge issue. That's just where the groove comes through. Except if your wife gets very annoyed by things like that. <laughs> <laughs> go look for them on your dresser. That's Have you ever too noticed heavy. them? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're it's actually a little bit proud here. So when I plane this, I'll be able to plane it all down smooth. I have to take a little bit off the surface here, but I mean just like a shaving or two difference. And then this side, the tails are just a hair proud. They've been compressed into place. So I'll be able to plane those off nice and flush too. So going past the line a little bit might give you a little bit more playroom, but not enough to make any difference. But here I've got a really nice, I'm really happy with how tight the back of this is against the line on both of these <laughs> because that knife line is intact. And uh, so that's, that's the dovetail. Where are we at time? 41? Should I do the other <laughs> end tonight or should I do question and answer? Sorry, I was... Uh, comment down below. Do you want me to do the other end and finish up this box and get it together tonight? Or do you want me to do the, re uh, the rest of the time with a question and answer? I probably got about 10 minutes more worth of work to dovetail the other one. I got four questions so far. You have what? Four questions. Okay, so let me dovetail it. So what are the questions? Uh, Moonwolf 71 asks, do you undercut to leave wiggle room when you go to put the joints together? Um, yes, it is better to undercut than to leave it proud. Because if you leave it proud, you have to come back and clean it up. And leaving it proud just a little bit causes all sorts of really bad issues. Because if it's proud just a little bit, it becomes very hard to see that it's proud. And in doing so, when you go to fit it down in there, everything looks good and it looks like it should fit and you start to tap it and then suddenly what happens is your board splits because it's a little bit proud halfway down it's going to be putting force in there so it looks like it fits and everything starts to slide in but the moment you tap it your board just going to crack apart because it, it's literally a wedge in there because it's fatter halfway down um, and that's that's something you just can't see um, with hardwood that's a problem with softwood it's not as much of an issue because with softwood things compress and squish around more um, but with hardwood, it can be a very bad issue. Um, so it's better to leave it undercut so you don't have to worry about it. If it's proud, then you got to worry about it and make sure. Um, but again, that's why you stick a square in there to make sure that nothing is sticking up in the middle um, to hit, hit inside the joint. I hate prideful wood. What's that? <laughs> I've never heard it called proud before. When something sticks high? Yeah, it's called proud. I get it. I, I understand why it's called that. I just had never. Yep. Welcome. Not to everything goes over my head. I might be short. But come on. So you're basically saying that you're not a proud person. You're humble. I'm very humble. Very, <laughs> very. <laughs> that was a. She's got a new <laughs> saying. <laughs> right. What's the next question? Ray Flowers asked. Would a one and a half inch wooden screw be good enough for a chop on a leg vise? It would, it, it, it would. I can't say it. It would, it would be a maple dowel, of course. Oh, yeah. Far stronger than it needs to be. Um, I've used a leg vise with a one inch maple dowel screw. Um, yeah. You don't need... It, you, it is amazing. It is absolutely mind-blowing how strong wooden screws are. They are just incredibly strong, far stronger than you need them to be. Um, and if you get up to inch and a half, two inch, in some cases two and a half inch screws, um, they will hold thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds. Um, so don't, don't worry about that. Uh, that inch and a half will do you incredibly well. <laughs> His head is really shiny. He's so shiny. Sorry, am I blinding people when I bend over? Well, then it made me think of the shiny song from Moana. <laughs> the crab. But Before you move on, make sure you mark 
what you need to cut. So you cut on the right side of the board. You didn't even wait for them to tell you whether or not to finish. You just decided to go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. <laughs> what did they say? I had one finish it. Did you have anyone say just questions? Uh, no. Oh, well, then I chose the right one. <laughs> Here, let me just make these cuts. I'm not sure if the finish it is someone who grew up on Mortal Kombat. Finish him. But anyways. Uh, you ready for a question? Yeah, just a moment. I'm going to make oh. some noise here for just a couple seconds. <laughs> Two of four. <laughs> okay, what you got? All right, so James Carthu. I'm guessing, why do people use holdfasts? I don't think I've ever seen one hold anything for long. I prefer G-clamps. Um, if I use it in most any other hole, they will hold indefinitely and incredibly well. Um, the problem is I have a four inch thick hard top and holdfasts work really well with like three inch, two inch, or in hardwoods, maybe one inch. Um, with softwoods, uh, four inches isn't as much of an issue. Um, or I could just open up the bottom of the hole and they hold incredibly all day long. Um, but this particular hole, actually I have some wax down in there and so the hole, the hold fast likes to slide. Uh, and I just got to clean it out, get a reamer in there and clean it out, have it in a while. But that's the hole that I use the most because it's right there in the corner. If I were to go over this side, it could work fine, but then I'm going over the bench and it just doesn't work as well. Hold fasts work phenomenally well, far faster and easier <laughs> than a clamp. So, yeah. What else you got? Uh, Don T asks, have you ever used one of those dovetail holding boards like David Barron uses? I'm wondering if they are worth it. The dovetail what boards? Holding boards that like- David Oh, Barron. yeah, yeah. Um, ah, no, I don't like jigs. Um, I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't mean that they're bad. Um, I don't like jigs. I don't like things that hold boards and places in place. It just, it takes the fun out of it for me. Very fast dances. But if you're the type of person who likes jigs, um, then yeah, they work well. Uh, in my opinion, a jig is only good if it teaches how to cut without it. Um, like the Cat's Moses dovetail guide, which I'll often use that. You hold it in place and the magnets hold the saw um, in the right angle and orientation, which is really nice because then your hand is still running it and they teach your hand how to cut. So this helps you to work without it. Um, I, I like to work without it because it's just a little faster, a little more efficient, and I get to make a slight adjustments in my angles. Um, but having a board that holds everything in place to make it easier to cut just takes more time. And then the, the focus is on precision, and I just don't like it when the focus is on precision because I am not a terribly precise person when it comes to this. What? Those. I'm not. That was probably really loud for them. But probably. <laughs> you're not precise, my foot. Well, when it comes to woodworking in detail, you should see some of the other people and how precise they want to get. I mean, wood is a, a live thing. It moves, it bends, it twists, it grows, and it changes. Um, and so I don't like to get, when you start talking about tens, ten thousandths of an inch in detail, it's just not worth it to me. They probably also don't have small children. I'm very detailed on most things in my life, just not in my woodworking. <laughs> What else we got? I think you were pretty detailed on that table. But anyways. No. Yeah. yeah. Wait until, I, I'm going to do a video here show, soon showing a bunch of um, problems in some of the projects I've been putting up. And I, I think, think it'll be kind of one of those cool things for people to see. Just like contradicting me. I never contradict you. No, never. Never contradict my wife. <laughs> Look, I have nothing to throw at you right now. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got? 
Um, Jack Beeson asks, since pine compresses more than a hardwood, would you make your dovetail slightly tighter? No. <laughs> um, no, uh, as I want them to be, I want them to be the correct size. I don't want to be compressing anything. I don't want to be, anytime you're compressing something, you're, you're putting energy into it that it will eventually want to push out and break something. Um, and so putting that stress into the joint is just, it's, it's not a good idea. It doesn't add strength. It actually adds uh, long-term weakness. So that's my answer. No, I, I don't do that. What else? So there, I guess, is clarification on the board. So that board is only for setting up pins or your tails and making sure that the boards are square with each other. That is the board he is talking about. Yes, yeah, it's a... It's a okay. jig that holds them in place so you can mark the lines. Okay. Um, which, like I said, there's there's nothing wrong with it. It's just for me that it takes more time to do that than it does just to set the board, hold it in place, and mark the line. Um, but if you're the person who likes that type of thing, then more power to you. Um, everyone's just a little different. Okay, I make sure which board I'm on. Front, left. Left, front. There we go. Okay, let's do this again. Um, I don't know if this will fit. It probably will not. First time on every joint is always a fun one, so I like showing this. Here, uh, two. So let's see. I need it to go this way. And, oh, really? I was hoping to show some fixing here, but I think, why is that one canted? Ah, good. I do need to fix them. <laughs> you can see that this side is down and this side is not. And it's because this pin is running into something. And on this side, I can see... Let me see if I can zoom in and show you this. Ooh, ooh. Focus. There we go. So on this side here, you can see this is the line I drew, but there's a small piece of wood here. That small piece of wood is sticking out and causing this uh, tail from not sliding down all the way. So we can adjust that. One of the easiest ways to take them apart, put them on the table, one quick tap down, one quick tap down. <laughs> so this one's big enough. I'm actually going to come with a chisel and clean that back. That small curl, if I wanted to, I could have taken a hit the mallet and driven it down on there, and it would have gone down all the way. But in doing so, I would be introducing that stress, and this small curl here could then become a wedge to want to break the board apart. And I don't want that. I want it to go this way. So now let's see what we got. Yeah, it's feeling better. Beautiful. Oh, now that one I like. Let's see. Hair of a gap over here, not bad. And a little bit right here in this corner. But that's tight, that's tight, that's tight, that's tight. That's tight. Good and flush in the bottom. Really like how that came out. So now we can actually take this apart. And I want to do back left. Here, let's switch over to this one. We can put our box together. Slides down. And then put this on. And I like my joints to be tight enough so that I can push them by hand most of the way. But then once they get in a little ways, they need a little bit of tapping. And you should be able to pound them together with your fist and let them seat all the way down. So there's our flower box. Dovetail jointed and purdy. Um, what? There's part of a flower box. Oh, yes. So <laughs> next time, uh, we'll be making the bottom, and we're going to do it kind of like a recessed panel door, um, but it will be in the bottom here. And then hopefully we're going to be doing the glue up live, which is always a stressful and fun thing. But uh, yeah, I kind of like this thing. It's pretty. What other questions we got? Mm. 
actually caught up? <gasps> we might what? actually get done <laughs> early. What? <laughs> Say what? Is it, Is it square? square? No, Ooh, the question. Let's find out. Let me get my bigger square so I can see. So let's put this, uh, find the spot where it'll fit. And hot snot. Here, let me see if I can show you guys this up a little closer and see what happens. So if I can focus in this way. So straight off, let's see if I can keep this in line with the camera. So if I slide this down and make sure I'm hitting the place right there. And so that one is slightly off. Why am I slightly off square? Yeah, slightly off square there. Just a hair off. Let's see if it's just that side or the other side was perfect. Yep, just off square that way too. Oh, so I wonder if I just hit it. So I need to go this way. Yep, same thing. So the whole thing is just racked slightly. Yep, racked slightly. So I need to go this way. I wonder if I just... There we go. Yeah, see, that's what I'm looking for. Right there. So. And right there. The nice and tight and square. That makes me happy. <laughs> okay, I have a question. What's that? So then how are you going to attach it to the house? Screws. But where? Um, well, I haven't decided yet. I, I, was, I wanted to go outside and take a look at it. But part of me has thought about making a French cleat for it to hang on. And then part of me says just put it on the wall and go zink, zink, zink. <laughs> Uh-oh, I'm getting the look. I'm getting the look. Shields up, Captain. I'm getting the look. <laughs> <laughs> Are you questioning my methods of attachment? Perhaps I'm showing you my preference. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll discuss it with my wife and we'll figure out what we're going to be doing. <laughs> well, I just, you didn't have like, whole, I just I was have... curious because how you would get a drill in there. And you have to remember, I fix sick people. I don't. <laughs> We don't usually go jo, 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 into people. Well, no, if you did that, we'd have other problems. <laughs> cool. Uh, square flowers, yes. It's a flower box. Close enough. Can we stream earlier? Uh, well, we tried earlier, but uh, due to the right now, we have kids doing all sorts of things, and um, that is running into issues. Uh, we may end up doing some earlier in the day, but we have to do them on the weekends because Sarah works during the day. Um, Unless you could get Vince James to be up at 5 a.m. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> we tried to have him one hour earlier, but then that runs into all sorts of issues with uh, kids' games and events. Um, so this is the time we have right now for them. So. Unfortunately. But we could look at a weekend. Yeah, okay. maybe sometime we'll do a, a weekend and uh, and do it earlier, for especially those people in Europe. And, well, actually, we, we'll be doing, um, we may be doing a live on the Tuesday that we are in um, England. And I will be in London. So that'd be kind of fun if we found a place to do a live and just do a Q&A with you and me. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's about it. Missing anything? No. Nope. Any last minute questions? Sam wants to know if you can do a secret miter dovetail. Um, yeah, sometime I'd like to do that. That would be a, a good uh, a good project. Those are incredibly difficult. Um, they're not a beginner's task, but they're a lot of fun, uh, and it's it's a good way to to test your skill. <laughs> they will not end up perfect. Uh, yeah, they'll never end up perfect. They're secret, so it shouldn't matter, right? Well, the miter is the problem, and that's not that's what's not secret. Yeah, it's miter. It looks miter on the outside, but dovetails on the inside. That sounds unnecessarily complicated. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it is. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, duct tape and close enough. I like your no, I like closet, not close enough. 
duct tape and closet. And a closet. Oh, yes. <laughs> we might have other visitors at our door that we don't need. Thank you. Velcro on a wall. That one I would maybe. Cool. Well, I think that'll about do it. So uh, until next time, which we'll be doing the bottom and uh, hopefully finishing or gluing it up. And we'll see if there'll be a fourth video. I don't know. But uh, we'll get there when we get there. So I think well, that's there's it. no carving on it yet, so you know. Maybe we'll do some finishing and carving on it after it's all glued up. Facetious. We'll see. <laughs> so I think that'll about it. And until next time, have a wonderful day.